One of the most interesting aspects of astrophysics has been trying to understand how stars form. How do stars and planets actually begin forming? Does water exist everywhere in every sort of star forming region? What possibilities are there for life in the universe? Really the cool thing about the Herschel Space Observatory is it's going to give us um, opportunities that we've really never had before to uh, observe a variety of different things in the universe. The Herschel Space Observatory is named after William Herschel. Herschel will be the first observatory to be able to work at far infrared and submillimeter wavelengths. Newly formed stars and forming galaxies are actually brightest in the infrared. We're looking at objects which have temperatures of somewhere between 30 and 100 Kelvin. Zero Kelvin is absolute zero, that's minus 270 degrees centigrade. And it turns out that that material that's that cold actually emits radiation, emits most of its radiation in the far infrared and submillimeter part of the electromagnetic spectrum. When Herschel launches it will carry one piece of Canadian hardware, the local oscillator source unit for the instrument called Hi-Fi. Another aspect that Herschel has, um, which no other instrument in, in space has had before, is the ability to do uh, what we call very high resolution spectroscopy. This allows us to actually look at the, at the chemical fingerprints um, that exist in space. By studying the, the, the radiation that comes to us from these, these regions forming stars and planets, and by shining that radiation through these instruments called spectrometers, we can break the light up into its component colors, and that will tell us right away how much hydrogen is there, how much helium is there. Herschel, especially through the iFi instrument, will allow us to look at a vast number of molecules and many different frequencies. Herschel will be launched later this year by the European Space Agency, our partner. So water is incredibly important, and you might ask why do we have to go to space to observe water when we can see it everywhere on the Earth? But the fact is the water in our own atmosphere means that we can't see through it to the water that's in space. Water is a strong absorber of infrared emission. If you get up above the atmosphere, that's all gone. If we want to study the universe where, it's, where the formation processes are at their brightest, we must go into space. Herschel will be the largest telescope ever launched into space and will open a brand new window for astronomical research. It's three and a half meters in diameter. It's absolutely enormous. We're putting Herschel in a special position. We're putting it at the L2 point. This is a place where you can actually orbit a satellite around and it will stay in the same position relative to the Earth. One of the most amazing things that Herschel will be able to do is to actually determine the content of water in regions forming stars and planets. We'll also be able to look at other places in the universe and ask, are there other planets like the Earth, that is, other planets that are covered in water? So for me, this is all very exciting. Uh, it will allow me and, and my colleagues uh, to do things that otherwise would not be possible uh, here on this planet. This will be an amazing treasure trove of information to try to use in understanding just how we go from a big cloud with millions of times the mass of the sun to only a small fraction of that breaking up and actually forming individual stars. Our Canadian team and our international partners are looking forward to many years of productive research with this new instrument and to making many exciting discoveries with this unique and cutting-edge technology that is high-five.